Hey YouTube, it's me, Jen, your pudgy picker, and Kim, and we are here again for another podcast. Two sisters, one booth, and this is podcast number 23. 23. Can you believe that? I know, I feel so old. Yeah, well. <laughs> a week and a half. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> She's abusing me. Okay, uh, today we're going to be talking about security of your booth as well as in the antique mall um and also kind of a, a category that would go with that is should you have a locked case or even is that something you can do uh at your particular mall so as always we give our experience and we give what works for us and what our mall allows and you will have to check with your antique mall and see if that's something allowed or how that actually works. So I guess the first thing I thought of when I when I started writing down notes for this is realize that you will have things stolen. <gasps> no, absolutely. Da, da, da. Yeah, I mean you you know you have situations where if you sell on eBay that you know somebody might try and scam you or you know something like that, but. That being the case there, you have to realize when you have a physical space, it doesn't matter if you're a Target, Walmart, you know, mom and pop store on flea the corner. Market. Yeah, flea market. Any <laughs> garage sales. Yeah, I've any, had stuff stolen yeah. at my garage sale. So any kind of venue where you have customers firsthand standing there touching the merchandise, there is a chance that something will get stolen. Um, I guess, too, you always think of something small getting stolen. That's not necessarily the case. Nope. I know that, uh, I don't think it's where we're at now, but previously, people have literally walked off with, like, a sofa-sized painting. Yep. Huge. And you think, how in the world would you get away with that? Yep. You walk out with purpose, like you're supposed to be carrying something out, <laughs> and people go, oh, I wonder, yep. well, I guess nobody would just walk out with yep. a painting. The same way they walk out with those big screen TVs at Walmart. Yeah. Just right so out the you, door. So you walk out with that yep. confidence, like, you know yep. what you're doing, and if you you know if you run out or you're acting real sneaky and suspicious, then, you know, yep. that's that's probably what would give you away. Yeah. Um. So... I guess in uh, when we first talked about this too, having a locked case. Uh, with our antique mall, we can have our own locked case in our space. And this could be anything from an entire like curio cabinet all the way down to like a medicine cabinet size with like a glass front. Um, it can be any size. You can take something and modify it uh, to have a lock. Yep. Um, so this is something that is allowed in our mall. Um, so let's say you have this cabinet, you have it locked, a key is kept up front at customer service, and when the people who are walking around working that day, if someone says, I'd like to see something in this case, they uh, take down the number of the vendor, they go up front, they ask the customer service person for the key, they sign. We have a sign-out paper that they sign out what their number is, what the date is, what time they're taking it, and then they go unlock the case. They stand there with the customer uh, while the customer handles the item. Yeah, no, I really don't want it. They put it back. They relock the case. They return the key. If the person wants the item, then they will uh, give the person a claim ticket, and then we have a cabinet up front that you would put that item in and put that number with it. So if it comes out of a case, yeah. it goes up front to be held in another case. Yeah. So it's not like we have it locked up. Oh, you decided you want it here. You can walk around the store with it. It doesn't work that way. So that is how it works in our mall. Yep. Um, so you'd have to check with your individual mall to see if that's something that you're allowed to do. Um, the uh, previous place that we had been in had allowed that for some time. Then they got to a point where they would have, it was a closet size locked yeah, case. pretty big. Really big. And you could have that in mm -hmm. your space and you would have to pay to rent that. You could not have any case, any size, yeah. anything of your own yeah. in there. Yeah, that 
I mean, we were there for a long time, and in between that time, they had cases that you could rent, and all those cases were in the same area. Yeah, and you could and rent them by themselves. Yes, by themselves instead of a booth space or in, in lieu of another space. Um, and then, that, of course, there was always a person on duty in that area that had a key. And if someone wanted to see something, they were in charge of opening and closing those cases. But then it got where they were switching them off and putting them in the booths, and you were no longer allowed to have your own. So each place is different. We're just letting you know you know how what we're aware of or what we've seen in our own stores or around us. Yeah, so, you know, you think, well, what kind of things would you would you think that should be locked up? Um, I think of coins. Jewelry. Yep, jewelry. Anything small and valuable. Yep, small um, vintage items you don't want people handling. Yeah, something that's delicate that yeah. you don't, you want people to, if they're going to make the decision to buy it, then they, you don't want 20 people picking yeah. it up and handling it. And if someone had dog clothes that they handmade, and so it was full of all the handmade dog clothes. Yeah, so, and I guess you need to think, too, when things are, might get stolen, it's not valuable, oh, this is a gold coin, or this is a silver coin. Sometimes the rhyme or reason why people take things, there really is no rhyme or reason. It's just they want it. Yeah. That's all there is to it. So it's not even like, well, if I lock up my valuable things, nothing will get stolen. No, people will steal a, a dollar yeah. object just as much as they steal a $50 object. Oh, yeah. So keep that in mind. Um, if, uh, if your booth or your mall does not allow you to have a cabinet or the cabinet that they want to put in the booth for you to rent, it's too much, it's too big, it's too whatever, then you might consider trying to sell those things maybe online or to sell them locally somewhere so that uh, you wouldn't have to worry about having that locked up. Um, you know, it's... It, it's deciding what you want to sell and if it's worth the risk of having it there. And even if something's locked up, people have been known to kind of jimmy things open. Mm -hmm. Or when we had some coins stolen out of a booth, out of a locked case, the person had a long, thin object and was scraping the items off of the yeah. shelves. Like those, what do they call calipers or whatever, those medical yeah. things that they use in surgery. They're real long and slender and they mm -hmm. were... At the other place, there was a, a problem with the one of the toilets, and they went in to see why the toilet wouldn't stop running. And when they took the top off, there was a set of those in there. Someone Taped hid in them, the tank. Hid them in there, and they jimmied loose enough to keep the water from shutting off one time and got caught. So where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. So I guess that's something you need to consider. Is it something that you want to do? We have a small, I would say it would be like medicine cabinet size. Yeah that we have used in the past. Yeah. You could even hang it on the wall. We had it hung on the wall and, secu uh -huh. and secured to a top of a bookcase. Mm -hmm. And between those two, yeah, it wasn't very big, but But it it's worked. not something we've used. Not since we moved. Yeah. Uh, and I, well, I don't know if this is good timing for this or not, because I didn't see what order your notes were in. But Whatever. I was thinking, too... <laughs> When you have a secure, for safety sake, for security, for whatever that you want to put something in a lock case, you do have to think about it this way, too, is there are some people who will not take the time to ask to, to look at an item. So, you know, is it something that's a value or a reason why you have it in a locked case? Because you may lose a sale, too. Yeah. Because like me, if I'm in there and I only have a little bit of time and I'm looking, it's really pretty, but I don't see anybody around. It's like, ah, oh, forget it. I just, I don't have time for this. So, you know, you, why do you want to lock it up in the first place? You have to think about. And also consider this. There are people who even have like, almost like a jewelry type cabinet where yeah. it's that shape. And if you're going to do something like that, my suggestion is put it so the price tags can be oh, seen. Yes. Because that's half of the question. Yeah. Is how much is that? Yeah. So if somebody comes up, they don't see a price, and then the guy make, you know, one of the walkers, as we call them walkers, walks all the way up, gets the key, comes back over, takes it out. Oh, that's too much. Yeah. So, I mean, you're you're having, you're spending manpower on something that could have been answered quite easily had you had the price. Yep. So when you're laying out things and you're displaying things, have the tags face up yep. or in such a way. I mean, I have even practically stood on my head when something is on a clear glass shelf, to see what underneath, because the tag is face down. It's not yes. a pretty sight, I'll tell uh. you. 
<laughs> so, I can imagine. Yeah, so I mean, you you know, you, you got to think of those things. You just put things in there and you arrange them. You want them to look nice or whatever. Have it so the price is easy to see. Mm-hmm. Or some people, I guess, might figure, well, you know, once you have it in your hand, you might decide to spend that extra yeah. money. No, not really. No. <laughs> well, so. that and, well, you know, if you if they see the price, they'll go, oh, too much and walk away. But if they get it out, then they have it in their hand. They're like, oh, well, maybe. No. No. <laughs> and again, Yeah, and no. if they see it <laughs> and they see the price and they still want to look at it and handle it, yeah. then, of course, you're going to be closer to that sale. But. So keep that in mind. Find out what your store policies are. Um, we've already talked about what type of items should be locked up. Uh, maybe consider selling those online. Um, now, besides having something locked down, <laughs> there are other ways that you can deter um, theft yep. in your mall. Yep. Um, speaking of just our space and our mall, uh, all the people who are working there, there are no employees. There are people who are vendors as part of our rental agreement. We pay a certain amount, plus we work a certain amount of days per month. Yep. Now, everybody has that. So we have a 10 by 10 booth, and that requires us to work two days a month. Since there's two of us, we each work one day a month. Now, there are individuals who have a double booth or two booths or a double booth and a single booth so the more space you have Mm -hmm. of course the more money it is but the more time you are going to be physically there there are some vendors that are er there almost every time we're in there every Every day day. so that being said that is people who work there so i think that being the case they're more i mean you you know how it is if someone would steal from you that you're more vigilant in that way yeah. And even malls that have employees have people walking around. And if you're in there restocking your booth and you happen to see one who's maybe somebody who's acting a little bit suspicious or a little bit squirrely or spending too much, what the managers will say is they're spending a little too much time yeah. in one spot. Yeah. So what, why? Are, are they spending too much time because they're looking at something intently wanting to buy it? Yeah. Or are they waiting for an opportunity to walk off with something? So what we're encouraged to do in our booth as vendors, whether we're working or we're there for ourselves, is if you see someone who is spending even just regular amount of time looking at items, you speak to them. You know, hi, how are you doing? It's good to see you. You know, is there anything I can help you with? Uh, that kind of thing. So when you're engaging someone in conversation, people who are there to steal, they don't want to talk to anybody. They, they don't, don't want, want to draw attention to, to Yeah, themselves. they don't want you to look no. at them for more than a minute or two to know what they look like. They may even be rude. Well, you know, every time I come in here, people are always, you know, asking me how I'm doing. <laughs> I love people like that. Yeah, I've actually had people say that to me. Every time I turn around, I've been asked five times if they want to take this from me, and I just can buy one. I'm leaving. I've had them get mad and leave the store. Well, you know what? That may be someone who's going to steal, and they're like, you know what? I can't get anything done in here. I'm leaving. So that that's part of it, being friendly, engaging people in conversation. And even if they're not there to steal, they may say, you know what? Now that you mentioned it, I was kind of looking for this or that. or, you know. So it is, it's, it's not only good customer service, but it is also a deterrent for theft. Um, we also have things in place in our uh, mall where we have people, when you do sign up for your work days, there's different categories, there's different positions you can do. Um, there's, of course, a cashier. There's people up there to bag and wrap items that are more delicate. Uh, there's a customer service, someone who answers the phone, checks out those keys we were talking about. Um, there's also people, like we said, walking around. We have a greeter in the beginning of the store. When you come in, hi, you know, welcome, you know, welcome to the store. Have you been here before? No. Okay. Well, just let you know. We, you know, you get the little spiel where the bathroom is. Oh, and, that's important. Gotta oh, know yeah. where the bathroom Gotta is. Know, yeah. Yeah. You know, and we have a cafe, blah, blah, blah. You know, you've been here before. Well, welcome back. It's nice to see you, whatever. Mm -hmm. We also have someone who works uh, sitting in the back by the back door where they keep an eye on people coming in and out of the back door. Now, that is mainly an exit for vendors who are carrying in furniture 
or unloading. They have an a u unusual amount of stuff, so it's better to come in through the back door than the front where customers are. Yeah, or if the customers are picking up larger items because you can't get them through the front door, it's very easy because they're split doors. Plus we have, but, yeah. in the back, we have the furniture room. So yep. if somebody does buy something, it is a quicker, you route. know, a quicker route to just take them out the back door. So that being said, the person who's sitting there watches and also inspects packages, bags, boxes of inventory. Like if you come in and say, I got this box of stuff, it's not selling, I'm just going to take it home. The responsibility of that person in the back by the furniture room is to make sure that vendors are not carrying anything off that does not have their number on it. So because unfortunately, I wouldn't say for maybe necessarily for us, yeah. not that I would want to believe, mm -hmm. but if you talk about any average business, the biggest amount of problems with theft is employees. <laughs> yeah. So that's something that is addressed by having someone sitting at the back door. So Well, you know, if you remember, that's why they started doing it at the other place we were at, because... There was too much stuff, just kind of odd stuff that you wouldn't think average Joe Blow would be walking out the door with. Yeah. And once they started checking packages and making someone do that at the exit doors, that stopped. Because the second set of doors was ones used mostly by employees. But unfortunately, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, what, you know, law enforcement, government, or anything else, there's always people that aren't on the up and up, so... Yeah, that's sad to say, especially when you consider your, if the employees that we don't have are other vendors, you know, it's kind of, well, how would you feel if somebody yeah. stole from you, but you're going to steal from another vendor? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's it's a sad reality, but it can happen. It happens. So, um, also, other deterrents of theft are when items come through uh, the front register the wrappers are encouraged to look through items. If it is something that has pockets, if it is a purse, you are to look through that and make sure that there's not anything, you know, attached to something else that shouldn't be. Um, quite some time ago, I uh, had a purse come through. I was wrapping it. It had some stuffing, some paper in it. I looked through all the inside pockets and found a $20 brooch inside a zippered in the where we're at now mm -hmm. and of course you're like oh I, maybe the person who brought this purse in forgot this was here and of course the person's gonna be like oh i have no idea how that got in there yep. they may or may not i've had that happen when i was at walmart i bought a per when i was looking through a purse thinking i was gonna buy it this was a while back but i found i was checking because i always check zippers make sure everything works before you get it home and i found jewelry in one of the pockets and I'm glad I did because can you imagine me getting Somebody up might the have register? Thought it was you. And I would have went, oh my goodness, I don't know how that got in there. And they're like, all yeah. right, uh -huh. yeah. We've heard that uh -huh. before. So I mean, there's many other ways to, you know. Well, even theft. like you know, when when me being a cashier, um, th that's one of the things we don't allow the customer to take the tags off to help us. Yeah. Because I need when I'm taking that tag off, I'm making sure this is a you know, five by seven, red, whatever, and the right right label on the right item and not where someone switched switched the tag for a $2 item onto a $20 item. So mm -hmm. I have to pay attention to that when I'm taking tags off. So there's all these different policies and these different things in place to make sure uh, that, that things are done in an honest way and that there are no mistakes. Even if, uh, you know, I had something in my booth let's say for $40 or $50, the person wanted to know if I would take less. On my card, before they were to call me, it would say, if it's over $25, you can give them 10%. There is a special form, a little small form, but they have to fill that out and attach the original price tag to say, this is me, Jen, vendor 107. This is, you know, Kim, vendor 5. You know, she, she has authorized this date, this time, that the price can be 10% off. Does it have to be cash? Can it be by credit card? So all that's written down. So if something goes wrong, you have that paper trail to look back and say, I only said this much. Who's the one who filled out the tag? Yes, that's happened before. On yeah. The wrong stuff on the wrong day. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things that you, there's all these different things, you know, 
that might be seem like a pain in the butt, but it all is there to serve a purpose mm -hmm. to make sure that your items are protected, my items are protected, and that you know a customer doesn't see a loophole in that. And we also talked about our price tags. We have to use the price tags that are all uniform, and that is for our protection. Yep. Also, if you have a price tag and you say, you know what, I don't feel like writing all this information out on another price tag, I'm going to cross it off and I'm going to mark it down half. You're not supposed to do that because mm -hmm. what's to stop the average person from just scratching through it and writing it down? Mm -hmm. And some people will say, it. well, I, I'll just put my initials. There's over 100 vendors. Do you think you all the register food. people are going to know exactly what your initials nope. are and what they look like? Nope. I could probably, I, I don't think I know half of the vendors up there. Yeah. Because I'm not in the store enough. I don't work the store a lot like a lot of them do. And there are times when they walk in or out and they speak to you and you're like, who's that? <laughs> yeah. So how are you supposed to know that if they mark something out? And that leads, again, I'm sure you were going in that direction that if you're, if you print them out yourself on your computer, so can somebody else. And they know, especially if they're used to coming in, they know what kind of numbers are there. They know they could choose this number because it's a working number in the system for the, you know, the ID number and they can fill it in themselves and then. So not everybody who's going to steal is going to come in, grab something and make a mad dash out yep. the door. There, there have are, been, but yeah, no. There no, are many I... ways to do that. Yeah. And when people don't follow the rules, then if, if they were to get something stolen, they would be the first ones to be pitching a fit about yep. it. And it's like, you have to understand, these all these things are put into play for our protection. You don't feel like writing out another price tag? Then you leave the price alone. You can't just you know cross it off and say, well, I put my initials. Mm -hmm. Well, the other uh, another issue, and we have seen this more than once at both places, is you have these price tags. Oh, I'm going to go up front and i got to go to the bathroom. And you leave a, a page of them yep. sitting there in your booth because oh, yeah. I was repricing things. Those are like blank checks. Yep. Anyone could pick those up and use them in your booth or in someone else's booth. Anywhere in the store. Anywhere. And nobody would know any different. Yeah. So, I mean, those... Especially if they're smart enough to be reasonable, like on a piece of furniture, if you mark it down 30 or $40. Because I've seen furniture come through dirt cheap and go, what? $2. So, yeah. I saw a chair go through it. I'm <laughs> oh like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, yeah you could, you know... So, lose. the point is, I mean, you have... You know, all you think, well, I, I have something I don't want it to get stolen. I'll lock it in a case. There's more to security yep. and taking care of your items and making sure that you're not only protecting yourselves, but all the other vendors that are there as well, that there are so many different ways. And when you think, you know, here's, if you go and you say, I need a paper with, you know, the rules and regulations and it's four pages long, you're like, holy cow. Mm -hmm. This is all for the protection of the business, the protection of the vendors, and to make sure that you're not going to lose money or get ripped off. So that's that's very important. Um, some people have put, you know, fake cameras in their booth. Or they'll put a sign that says, you know, smile, you're on, you know, you're on video or something. Mm -hmm. I have seen some of those security cameras <laughs> that look like you got them from the dollar store in the 1970s. And it's like, if you're going to do that, at least... Make it look like it look convincing. Yeah, really. I don't know. I mean, that's in our in our mall. We have the choice to do that. If you want to put up a security camera or whatever, you know, that's you know that's fine. But I don't know. And somebody will steal that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because see, when I whenever I would get anything, if you get something taken, I'm the kind of person that if I bought something for three dollars and was going to sell it for twenty. And somebody steals. I didn't lose three dollars. I lost. I lost twenty dollars. Yeah. That's how I look because that's how much I could have made from that item. <coughs> so you know. Sorry. There are people who steal. You have to just you know keep your eyes open. If you're there and you have a mall where there are employees, there's nothing wrong with keeping your eyes open, talking to customers. You know, if you see someone act a little squirrely, alert someone. You know, it's, there's just, you know, you got to keep your eyes open. <coughs> She's sorry burying her face in a pillow so she doesn't scare all of you. <coughs> Did it go down the wrong way? Choked on my own spit. Well, there you go. 
We're off. We're awesome like that, aren't we? <clears throat> oh, hey. <laughs> Still breathing, so we're good. That's good. So, I guess, is there anything else you wanted to add or any other no. anything I missed? <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I think um, I was trying to follow along to think of anything extra, but I think we pretty well, pretty well covered it. The thing is, we just all need to be vigilant. Um... You don't have if you're working and you think you see something that doesn't look right, you're not supposed to go up to the person and accuse them or go, "Hey, what'd you stick in your pocket there?" and yeah. you know cause a scene. Um, one of the best things to do is to go up and speak to the person friendly and just say, "Hi, um, is there something here I can help you with, or did you find what you were looking for?" The purpose behind speaking to them is, if they are stealing or have stolen or whatever. They don't like you talking to them yeah. because then you you're looking at them. You're going to be able to know who they are. Yeah. Um. They know then you're aware of them and you're going to watch them through the store. So as soon as you make them known that I was watching, I saw something not right, and then you go to the manager or whatever and let them know. And then at that point, you know you just legally you got to be really careful about that other stuff. Yeah. But. You got to think about it. In most cases, if you've stolen something, you've got something in your pocket, and you know people are starting to watch you and follow you, you're going to dump that because you're not going to want to take a chance of thinking, did they see me put that in my pocket? Yeah. And I don't want to be caught with it. Yeah. <clears throat> so don't do anything yourself. Don't be a hero like Jenny and I. We won't. We, <laughs> we don't wear our capes. Those. That's a story for another time. Oh yeah, we've we, been <laughs> known to be heroes occasionally. Yes. So. <laughs> You know, leave your cape at home that day. Just make other people aware of the situation. Go around, tell the other ones so that you, everybody is kind of really obviously looking. And in most cases, they're not going to walk off with anything after that. Yeah, you know, you have to be careful because if you're <clears throat> there as a vendor and you're working, you don't want to make a legal issue for the people no. who own the mall. No. So, yeah, that's that would be a good idea to say, you know, if, if I were to see someone stealing or even had that suspicion... How do I handle that? So, because yep. unfortunately there are people who steal and it's not people stealing because they're in need of anything because there is technically nothing you need in our mall. No. You know, we're not selling bread and, you know, a poor little homeless person comes up with no shoes and grabs a loaf of bread and runs off. But they had good candy. Yeah, but I mean, to see things like that, you know, you could say, well, you know, hey, I maybe understand that that might happen. Yeah. But in our you know type of space there's there's no reason it's just it's it's a mental thing it's a greed whatever you want to call it it is uh it's something that's going to happen yep. veronica baruch and that wasn't her name from uh willy wonka oh no uh yeah oh, come on come on her name which <clears throat> i wanted it i want it now oh that was um she turned into a blueberry no. Wasn't she the blueberry? No. Got everybody that listening. Was Violet. <gasps> that was Violet. 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 Violet, you're turning Violet, Violet. Yeah. yeah. No, okay. you're thinking of the spoiled. Yes. The don't that's care a... how I want it now. Yes, yes. That's the yes. one. Oh. But I want it now, yeah. Daddy. And that's what it is. People see something, they want it. They don't have the money or they don't want to pay for it because they they want it, but they don't want to pay for it. So. Well, and some people have some kind of illness where they... They, you know, what do they used to call it? Kleptomania? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I always think of the crap. It's kleptomania. That's, that's, no, no, that's, that's not. It's animaniacs. It's not kleptomaniacs. <laughs> kleptomaniacs. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, we're now that we've jarred everyone's brain and they're all, don't, oh, don't no, fill no. the comment section no, with no, no. telling me who that was. <laughs> Okay, so I hope we hope that you enjoyed our podcast this week. Please give this video podcast a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. If you have any questions, you can type them down there, or you can email a question to Jen at PudgyPicker.com. You can follow me on Twitter and also Instagram. And in both places you can find me under The Pudgy Picker. And you can subscribe if you haven't already. If you have not yet seen the new show that was on Thrifty Treasures, uh, her channel, um, she has uh, me and herself and uh, Tam from Tam's Place. 
and we are talking each month, the first Wednesday of each month, uh, at noon Eastern time, we're talking about antique booths. What a coincidence. Well, I plugged this show on there, so, you know, I got to give everybody their... their... Shameless. Got to do what you got to do. Hey, you know, sell it. All fair love and war in business. Yep. Sell it. Okay, so that's all we got. We will see you next time, or listen to you next time, or you'll listen to us next time. (laughs) We hope. Okay, we'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Why don't you just...